Very familiar story. Verse 3, it says this. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he had made an ornate robe for him. Verse 4, when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. I got one more verse that I want to share with you. And that's going to be the New Testament in Luke chapter 2. It's a very simple verse. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And it says this, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and watch this, and in favor with God and man. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and man. This morning, I want to talk to you briefly from the subject, growing bigger. Growing bigger. If you're taking notes, you can title your message, Growing Bigger. Let's pray one more time and we'll jump into the message. Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to, to gather as a community to worship you. Holy Spirit, right now, we just recognize you as our guest of honor. We ask that you would do what only you can do. God, we want to leave here changed. We want to leave here better, but not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us. And so we thank you for that. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this past Christmas, um, my kids received clothes from, from family members. Now, kids are never excited about receiving clothes, but uh, parents are. We love. We, we don't want kids to get toys because then we just got to clean up after the toy. Like, you know, so we, we, we are grateful when our kids get, get clothes. And so, so um, family members gave our kids clothes this, um, this Christmas. And, and so my, my youngest, he's five. He's opening it up, right? And he, and he pulls this pair of pants out and he's like Shh, and he looks at it and he's like so it goes to the next gift okay so as a dad I, I pick up I pick it I pick up and I'm like oh these are nice these are nice pants you know and I said amen and <laughs> and I and but but I said to myself I'm like man they look a little big you know, and so so I look at the the size, and my son is five, and it says size eight to ten years old, and I'm thinking to myself, who the heck buys clothes that are like five years before he can even use them? And so my wife, she she can tell that I'm about to say something, you know, and she looks at me, and and I can just tell she's like, don't say anything. <laughs> he will eventually grow into them. Now, you got to understand, there's two different philosophies that happen in the Peter household. There's my philosophy when it comes to clothes, and this, and, and this is my philosophy when it comes to clothes. Get my kids clothes that fit him now. <laughs> like, I don't have the space, I don't have the room, I don't got the patience to store some pants for five years, to pull them out. Like, I will not even remember they're there. Come on. But my wife, she, she has a different philosophy. My wife's philosophy, when it comes to clothes, she, she has a philosophy and the understanding that though the pants may not fit him now, it would be foolish to get rid of them because eventually, Lord willing, he will grow in to the pants. They may not fit him currently, but they will fit him eventually. And if he wore them right now, they may be a little uncomfortable. They may fall a little bit. We might have to safety pin him. But they will eventually fit him because he's going to grow into them. Now, here's why I'm telling you this illustration. It's because I want you to understand that the favor that God has over your life will always be bigger than what you can currently comprehend. And if you are not careful, you will view the favor that God has over your life and you will discard it because you're like, it doesn't fit me currently. But we got we to gotta live with the anticipation, understanding, God, I'm going to grow and to the favor that you got over my life. 
In fact, in fact, when I come to Luke chapter 2, it reminds me because because here, here's the big idea. You need to grow. <laughs> and if you got offended by that statement, you can chill because it says in Luke chapter 2 that Jesus had to grow. It said Jesus grew in favor. And so if Jesus had to grow, well, you better believe I got to grow. If Jesus had to grow, you better believe that you got to grow. And so it says that Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says that Jesus grew in favor with God and man. Now, so that we are all on the same page, here, here's the definition of favor that I want us to, when I say favor, here, here is, here is the, the definition that I want us to rally around. It's God's undeserved kindness towards you and to me. Favor is God's undeserved kindness towards you and to me. In fact, the word favor and grace is interchangeable in Scripture. And so, so favor this morning is God's undeserved kindness towards you and to me. Now, here's what I've discovered about favor is that there are different expressions of favor. Or, or excuse me, let me say it this way. There are different levels of God's favor that he has over your life. There, there, so, the, so when it comes to God's favor, there are micro expressions of God's favor. And so that, that's experiencing God's favor where you can actually experience it now in the moment. That would be pants that fit you now. Okay, like that's, that's the favor that you can experience, that you can walk in now and it fits your life. Right, so that's that job that you applied for where there was 3,000 applicants and you know that you did not deserve the job. And they call you up and they're like, Mr. Smith, you got the job. And you're like, whoa! And you know that was favor. Because you know you didn't deserve it. What is that? That's a micro expression of God's favor. It's something that I can experience right now. Hey, husband, some of y'all, you're a two at best, but you married an 11. <laughs> That's God's favor. And so, so there's these micro, micro expressions of God's favor that we can live in, we can, we can fit in right now, and it's amazing, it's perfect. But then there's also what I would call macro expressions of God's favor. And, and so that I don't get this wrong, here's how I would define, define this. Let me find it. It's, it's a level of favor that encompasses the fullness of God's plan for your life. And so this is greater. Because what I have discovered is that when it comes to the macro favor of God over my life, his kindness over my life, but in the totality, the fullness of the plans that he has for me, I always get to the place where I'm like, how in the world do I get there? And again, this is this, is this right here. The macro expression of God's favor are the pants that don't fit me now. And so I have to choose what I'm going to do with God's macro expression of favor over my life. Am I going to hold on to it? Or am I going to discard it? And how you, what you do in those moments matter. What you do in those moments when, when the pants are bigger than what you can currently fit matters. Now, when it comes to this idea of micro and macro favor and in this idea of we have to grow into this favor, the, 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 the macro, the big, the big picture of, of God's plan for your life, and, and this idea that we have to grow. I don't think that there's a better example in Scripture than the life of Joseph. See, because what we discover with the life of Joseph is that Joseph experienced micro levels of favor, micro, micro expressions of favor, but he also experienced macro expressions of favor. He experienced moments where, where, uh, where, where he saw God's, God's favor that fit him now, but then there was also a bigger picture. Now, we read in, in Genesis chapter 37, we actually saw a few examples of, of the favor that fits him now. It said that, that his father loved him more than the other kids. 
Friends, let me tell you, he's the youngest that was favored because everybody knows parents' favorites are the firstborn. Hello! So, so we, like, he had favor. He, his dad loved him so much, he gave Joseph a, a, a jacket of, of many colors that he didn't give anybody else. What is that? Favor. That's favor that I can fit in right now. But then what we're about to see is that God gives Joseph this dream. And in this dream, I want to submit to you that the dream was a macro example of favor. That in this dream, God revealed to Joseph, Joseph's plan, his plan for Joseph's life, excuse me. And it did not fit where he was currently at. So, so I want to, as, as we go through this, I just want to give you two, two, um, two areas of growth for you and I. Two areas where we can grow as people while, we're, while we are pursuing, while we're on the journey to pursuing the macro expression of God's favor, his plans and his purpose, big picture over your life. And so uh, to do that, we're going to read Genesis chapter 5, verse 7. This is still the same story. Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, excuse me. It says, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. So here's the first area of growth that is needed in our life. We need to grow in our expectation. We need to grow in our expectation. So Joseph, he's like, yo, bros, I, I had this crazy dream. He said, uh, in this dream, in this dream, we were, we were gathering grain and my sheaf of grain, like it was like, broop, it stood up. And then your guys' piles gathered around and it started bowing down to it. Now you could imagine as little brothers saying this to big brothers, that they're, they're kind of rattled a little bit. That, that in fact, they, they, aren't, they, aren't, um, they aren't excited about this little dream that Joseph, baby Joseph, baby brother Joseph had. But as I, as I shared with you earlier, this dream that, that he had, that God gave Joseph, I believe was the macro expression of God's favor over his life. That, hey, Joseph, here is the kindness that I have for you. Here are the plans that I have for you. And what I think is so important to see is that where Joseph was at currently, it made no sense that he would one day experience this. And yet, what we see is Joseph, despite him not, besides him being at a different place, a different stage to where the end result was going to be, what we see Joseph do, what we see Joseph do is he, he shares the dream with his brothers. And what I think by him doing this is showing his expectation for what God has for his life. Joseph understood that the dream was, no, was, was not currently where he was at, but he believed God so much. He was so expectant of that dream. He believed so much that what God was showing him in this dream, though it was bigger than where he was currently at, he believed it enough. He was expecting it enough to share it with other people. See, you know you are expecting it to come to pass when you're willing to share it with other people. There are things in my life that I'm like, God, I'm expecting, but I ain't going to say a thing. 
But Joseph, he was so confident. He was so full of expectation that he was willing to share God's bigger picture for his life. No matter the cost, no matter the ramifications of his, of his actions. Friends, we got to get to that place where we are so full of expectation that we, that we are willing to share it with people, that we are willing, we talked about our words last week, that we are willing to speak what God is revealing towards to us, the favor, the totality, the fullness of God's plans for our life, God's plans for your relationships, God's plan for, for your finances, God's plan for your occupation, God's plan for your schooling. God, that I may not see it now, it may not make sense now, but God, I'm believing with expectation that what you said will come to pass. Even if it's not currently what I'm seeing in this season. God, that I am willing to speak it. I am willing to say it out loud. God, that you will heal my marriage. God, that you will free me from this addiction. God, that you will give me that job. God, that you would help me start that business that you put in my heart that we begin to, to, to be full of expectation. Do you know the greatest enemy of expectation is? Excuses. Excuses of why God can't do something. Excuses of why God won't do something. Friends, our expectation needs to be bigger than our excuses. And every time that I choose to make my expectation of what I'm expecting God to do bigger than my excuses, guess what? I grow in my expectation. See, so, now nah, I'm going to move on. Well, so J Joseph shares his dream with his brothers and, and the, it just doesn't go well, which we get. In fact, it doesn't go, it goes so bad that they're like, hey, we're going to kill him. <laughs> Let's, we're, that's a bad, yeah, yeah. Uh, family needs therapy, everybody. Um, and so one of the brothers is like, no, I have a better idea. It's a more humane idea, okay? Let's just sell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're just, we'll just sell him. And, uh, and we'll just, you know, we'll just, we'll just sell him. And, and, and here, here's what I want, I want to say. Just because you're full of expectation does not mean that everyone's going to celebrate that expectation. And notice it was the closest people to him that were the ones that were first hurting him. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's, we, just because you're full of expectation does not mean everybody's going to be ride or die in that expectation. But we got to be willing to, to stay the course. And so, so Joseph, he, uh, he, he tells his brothers, the brothers are like, no, that's a dumb idea. We're going to sell you. So, so they sell him, okay? And what we discover is that Joseph's journey is up and down. Up and down. Come on, is that life for anybody else? It's up and down. Life is good. Praise God. Oh, it's down. What is happening? Uh, life is up. Woo! Let's go to church. Life is down. I don't want Jesus. Like, come on. And Joseph's journey is full of ups and downs. So friends, if your life is up and down, it's normal. You're not doing anything wrong. Probably not. <laughs> it's up and down. And so I want to read a portion of, of, of the text because what we see is, is it goes up and then down. And so Genesis 39, verse 1 through 4, it's the same, same story. We're just uh, fast forwarding a bit. Now, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, right? Because his brothers just sold him. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the great guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. Verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph. Hey, there's favor that fits. There's the pants, right? The micro expression of favor. Like I'm living it out. So you can live out micro expression while you're on your journey to the macro expressions of favor. So that he prospered. So the Lord is with Joseph. And because the favor of God was on Joseph, 
and said that he prospered. And he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, favor, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found, or excuse me, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, period, There's or comma, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. So, so Joseph, he's experiencing the micro expression of favor, the daily expression of favor, the favor that fits right now. And he's on the high. But what we read, if you read a couple more verses, one day Joseph's in his house minding his own business. No one else is in the palace But then all of a sudden, Potiphar's wife shows up. Woo, Potiphar. The very first desperate housewife (laughs) pops on the scene. And she says this. She's like, Joseph, I want you. And I I don't know if I'm pointing at anyone, but I'm not really. (laughs) I want you. (laughs) That's probably probably better. (laughs) Uh, She's like, Joseph, I want you to come to bed with me right now and she ain't talking about sleeping everybody and joseph's like no i can't do that like you you're my master's wife like he's he's put me in charge of everything he's given me authority over everything except for you because you're his wife can can i say that how we journey matters how you journey to the calling, the, the favor that God has over your life, it matters. And Joseph, he models integrity in this moment. He could have got away with it and no one would have known. It would have been his little secret. But he's like, I can't, I can't, we can't do this. And so what does she do? He starts to leave. She grabs his cloak and she starts screaming, ah! He attacked me! And they arrest him. So it was up. Potiphar gave him everything that he could want. Then he got accused for rape. Everything was down. And now he's in prison. But if you keep reading the story, the warden of the prison He found favor in the eyes of the warden. So now all of a sudden, everything that the warden gave Joseph uh, responsibilities for, everything Joseph touched prospered. So the warden, he elevated Joseph to be ahead of everything in prison. So Joseph, though he's down, he keeps going back up. And then, and then you keep reading. It's a long story, but you fast forward, you keep reading. And then um, the, the king Pharaoh's, excuse me, Pharaoh's baker gets thrown into the prison. And Pharaoh's cupbearer gets thrown in the prison. And they have these dreams. And Joseph, he interprets these dreams. And uh, the dreams came to pass. So Joseph, he's in prison. Some time has passed. All of a sudden, Pharaoh now has this dream. And the bake, or excuse me, the cupbearer, he remembers this guy Joseph in prison. And he says to Pharaoh, he's like, there was a guy that I was in prison with. <laughs> That's a scary sentence. <laughs> he helped me. <laughs> and uh, so Pharaoh, he calls Joseph up. Joseph interprets Pharaoh's dream. And all of a sudden, Joseph is in with Pharaoh. And all of a sudden, Joseph, Pharaoh has Joseph governing everything. He's over everything. But the journey, it wasn't a straight journey. It was up and down, up and down. And here's the second thing that we got to grow in. We need to grow in our level of endurance. We got to grow in our level of endurance. We, we have to be able to ride the highs and we got to be able to ride the lows. 
We got to be so fixated on the favor that God has for us, the macro level of favor that God has for us, that no matter the season we're in, if it's a good season, God, my eyes are still fixed on you. I'm still pursuing what you told me, what you placed in my heart. If it's a bad season, God, I'm still enduring. I'm still pressing forward to what you had shown me. God, I'm going to keep going until I reach what you promised, until I reach what you showed me. I got to be willing to have endurance. I got to grow in my endurance. And I think that there's two ways that we can grow in our endurance. The first way is this. We grow in our endurance by serving the people around us. That doesn't make any sense, right? Because you're like, well, when I'm trying to go through my own stuff, I don't have room or energy or bandwidth to serve anyone else. Like, I'm going through my own issues. I'm in my own prison right now. You leave me alone. But what do we see Joseph do? He's in prison, falsely accused. And some guys come down and they're like, they look stressed. Joseph, he could have just ignored it. But what does he do? He goes up to them. Can I help you? What, what, are, you, what are you doing? Do you need help? Can I serve you? Joseph, he was serving. Fat, uh, rewind, he, he, he was serving the warden. He was serving, rewind, he was serving Potiphar. On this journey of him reaching the macro expression of God's favor, we see him constantly serving people. Constantly, um, constantly bringing people into his circle. And what we end up discovering is that the people that he served were the very people that helped him get to the next place in life. The very baker that he served in prison was the very, uh, was a very, excuse me, the very uh, uh, cupbearer that Joseph served in prison was the very cupbearer that introduced Joseph to Pharaoh. If Joseph didn't help him out, Joseph would not be sitting right hand at the at Pharaoh's hand, Pharaoh's chair. He 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 had to serve people around him. And by serving people, I want to submit to you that he allowed others to be part of the process of whatever God was doing in his life. Can I say this morning that you and I we need people in our lives? that are willing to encourage us, that are willing to say, hey, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What's going on in your mind right now? What's going on with your thoughts? We, we, we need people in our lives that are, that are constantly speaking life into us, that when we feel like we want to give up, that we have people, hey, you can do it. Keep going. Don't give up. And so that's the first way that we grow, by having people speak into us. But he, here's the second uh, way that we have people speak into us, and we can have the band come up right now too, is that we grow by us having determination to speak to ourselves. I am so passionate about having others speak into our lives, other people praying into our lives. But I think it's about time that we learn to speak into our own lives. That, that you and I, that we, that we begin to learn to, to say when, when things are down, yeah, we, we're calling the prayer team, we're having people pray for us, but in our own quiet time, we're speaking to our heart. We're speaking to our own mind, our own spirit, our own soul, our own self to say, hey, snap out of it. Come on, like, I don't know how many of you guys like working out, but there's something, like when I'm working out and the weight gets too heavy, I'm like practically cussing at myself. You could do it, John, you got this. Like, I'm, 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 what am I doing? I'm speaking to myself, to my spirit. Some of us in this room this morning, we got to begin to speak into our spirit. Don't give up. John, keep going. John, keep fighting. John, keep dreaming. 
John, keep going. John, keep going. John, don't give up. John, continue to have hope. John, continue to have peace. That we speak to our spirits not to give up. And when I learn to grow in my expectation, and when I learn to grow in my endurance, watch what happens. Genesis 42, verse 6. Years have passed. Now Joseph, he was now the governor of the land. The person who sold grain to all the people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. There was a famine in the land. Joseph's brothers had to leave their home. They had to go to, jo uh, to Egypt. And the very thing that seemed like it would not fit him currently is the very thing that we witnessed in this verse. The very journey where, where, where God was like, this is the favor that I have over your life. God, it doesn't, it won't fit me. Grow bigger. Okay, I will. So Joseph grows bigger. The ups and downs, the ups and downs. But he, he, he was expectant of what God was going to do. He was ready. He had endurance to keep on going. And because he was expecting, because he had endurance to keep pressing through, the very thing that did not fit him in that moment was the very thing he was walking in right now. What was impossible in one season, if I'm willing to endure, becomes the very thing that I'm walking in in the next season. Come on, we got to grow bigger. God, would you grow us bigger? God, whatever season we're in, would you grow us bigger?